You're listening to the Punisher Water Fowls, the Union 0430 podcast. Brought to you by Real Geese Decoys, the most technological advanced silhouette decoys on the market. And Vortex Canada, the force of optics. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Episode 74 of the Union 0430. We're a little light on hosts tonight. It's just me and the beautiful, beautiful Phil Christian um, on with us tonight. I believe Dave is still working on splitting an atom. Ryan is um, MIA, uh, but we we know uh, we'll get him back. And then uh, Merck. I think he's had an issue with a kitten or a cat today. So uh, yeah, I don't Mark's know. He could down a cat. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Mark's probably down a cat. But we got Phil coming to us from Port Perry today. Um, I'm just outside of Kingston, and you got just the two of us for episode 74 of the Union. Um, thanks so much for for joining us again, listening to us on the podcast or watching us on the YouTube channel. Um, thank you very much. And I wanted to give a quick thank you. Um, it's, it's a little bit premature, but I wanted to thank everybody on behalf of Phil, Dave, Merck, and Ryan for all of you that are listening to the show. Um, got a stat back yesterday. We are almost at 10,000 downloads. Um, and for the big um, podcasts, uh, community out there uh 10 000 downloads is probably not a lot but phil when we came up with this idea i didn't know if 10 000 times someone was going to actually want to listen to a bunch of wing nuts like us so uh it's we're not at 10 000 yet but it's real close like yeah, we're no, four yeah we're 400 away or less than 400 away from from hitting that magic 10,000 downloads. So it it is big. And I think you know what? Maybe I'm going to do a contest. Maybe I'll do a little giveaway um when we hit that 10 uh yeah, maybe there's a couple things in the mail from some from some people. Um you know what we really need? What's that? Give me a second here. So I try to pick this up. We need more of these stickers. Yeah, we do. These stickers are the cat's ass. Maybe in like two different sizes. I like this size. It's a nice size, but maybe one just yeah. a hair smaller a little and bit one smaller. a hair bigger. Oh, I really, yeah. really, really like these stickers. All right. Just saying. Right. I've got one left and I still can't yeah. figure out where to put it. Yeah, well, you got one more than what I've got because I've got none of them. I've given all mine out and, yeah. and you're right. We do need more stickers. Um, it's, it's for sale. We, <laughs> uh, we need to plaster north america with punisher waterfowl stickers that's what yeah. we need to do um phil buddy thanks for coming on tonight i know i know you are very busy right now new shift change and everything new house new community kids going to new school all of that stuff um so uh i really and appreciate it's season. and it's hunting season yeah so let's so last week um, Phil invited us uh, down to Keswick for a for a hunt. Um, Mark and I drove all the way down. Got up early in the morning. Drove all the way down there. A little uh, pre oh four thirty. Yeah, a little pre zero four thirty. Uh, got down there, and you know what? Like, and and this will come up later in the show when I talk about another hunt too. But I. Every time I go on a hunt, and, and this isn't a bad thing by no means, it's just, it's funny to sit back and watch. So first off, I'm not a real experienced goose hunter. So when it comes to setting up decoys and all that stuff, I usually tend to, to whoever's, whoever's on the ground, let them, oh, yeah, we're doing this. And I just go and I stick decoys wherever, they, wherever uh, I'm, I'm told to. But sitting back and just listening the other morning three different ideas every time there's three <laughs> there's always well i think i think well with the wind coming this way and we could do this and we can do this so set the decoys this way and we'll stop them along this line and they should hook in here and then you know what three different um ideas on how to set up we we ended up setting up and then what maybe an hour 
45 minutes into it, we were like, you know what? We got to change something. And we, we still ended up having to change and adapt anyways, right? Yeah, and like, you, through experience and seeing what's, you know, what's worked and what hasn't, you know, over and over and time and time again, you kind of still gravitate to, you know, the things you know, the things you've seen and what works. And obviously, because, you know, the layout of where we were and <clears throat> the direction we had to shoot and whatnot, it was a bit of a given. Okay, you know what? We're, we're going to face this direction. It's going to be a straight crosswind shot. So we'll go, you know, a little heavy, a little wide on that upper arm. And obviously, you know, a little, little skinnier on the bottom end. And just kind of hope, you know, maybe the bird's kind of more quarter to you. Or if they do going to, you know, line up straight on, they're still giving you that nice... 20 20 yard shot or so yeah and you know, like as we saw like we had a few do it right juicy like do it right proper straight into our toes but then through the course of the morning you know we kept having those birds skirting behind skirting behind and yeah and obviously like now well obviously this is the first field shoot i've ever done with you and mark yeah and um and not knowing mark's background he is definitely a uh, an established field shooter mm -hmm. um but yeah he's like dude we gotta pull some of these decoys and i'm like yeah get out yeah. there and love you know, the three of us you know we, we rush out there and make you know a good handful of those real geese sail the wet side of the ground yeah move them back so hopefully you know you kind of prevent the birds from going behind you and hopefully you know more push them in front of your face and you know it, it worked out and again yeah you know, it's another another page in the book so to speak you know you know what we saw and what we learned that day and so unfortunately, like, you know, just the, the lay of the land and everything, you know, we were kind of semi forced to face a certain direction with, with shooting, obviously, for, for safety reasons and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at the end of the day, you, you do the best you can with the cards that you're dealt. Yeah, absolutely. You hope you put something together and make it work. Um, obviously, that flyway that we were shooting, I've had phenomenal luck in there in the past. Um, but again, and then you saw the numbers. There, there was no shortage of birds whatsoever uh, yeah, big time, um, big time. Uh, lots of birds um the thing that i loved about that so i'm not a big fan of shooting in the large flocks of birds right i i just don't like it for for the simple fact that well that's you know if it's if it's a flock of 20 or 30 birds if you can pull out you know between between 300 if you can pull out three or four birds um that's good right so so let's say that's 16 birds that's flying away that have now seen your decoy spread have now seen your layout blind um they've seen the setup uh I, and i really do believe that you're educating birds right so the the beauty thing about that hunt that we we done is that that flyway and it was really cool to sit back and watch it was we could see the birds coming probably you know, 800 to a thousand meters away, we oh, could yeah. see the birds coming and then, you know, a quick flick of the flag, a couple calls, and we would always just pull two or three, four, a single, whatever. And we would just pull those off that main flock. They would come in and some would fly, end up flying in behind us uh, and we wouldn't get a shot at them. But, um, but then again, Mark pulled off a couple crazy shots there. Um, fuck, that was that was ridiculous. Like, Goose Norris. Goose Norris. That's right. Yeah. So you know, I I, I guess, um, you know, when you talk about adapting, Phil, and and all that stuff, regardless of how experienced you are, um, your plan that you come up uh, while it's still dark. It, it may have to change regardless of how how smart you are or how experienced you are because it, you may have to make some adjustments and and we had we had good wind like for the most part but mm -hmm. the downfall it was like it was on and off yeah we either had like that good like that went you know we're not we're talking gale force winds by any means but you know a good breeze to give the birds that direction to suck in or we had nothing yeah it seemed like the birds were always coming through when there was the no no wind yeah so they yeah. come in they give you the you know the two or three loser laps they can't sort their life out and they're just like yeah and they keep going you know what 
you know what gave us the loser laps was those friggin' mallards. So, oh, like you and Merck, you and Merck are calling and, and waving a flag at, at these geese. I don't give a, I don't care what's happening with the geese. I see this, this Drake mallard just flying around. I'm like, oh, oh, oh here it is. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. And I'm hammering on, on my new duck lander call. Um, I'm just hammering on it and hoping that he's going to come down so I can have a shot at him. No way. Just circle, 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 fly away. In fairness, there was a few times we probably could have popped a couple. Yeah. But it's like you're, you're always chasing, like, again, you know, that, that the education aspect, mm -hmm. right? You have birds coming, the bigger yeah. flock. Yeah. And, you know, you sacrifice the one and then you, you screw it on 10 or 12. Or do you let the one do whatever, and then you hopefully draw, yeah. you know, like, you know, like it's the shootable size flock, right? And yeah, for yeah. sure, there was, there was a few birds that they could have died. Yeah. There was a it, couple that I probably could have sat up out of the layout blind and grabbed them by the feet. Yeah, but true. It's do, just, right? it, yeah, it's just like I, I mallards are, are my favorite. Um, so in here all day. I, I get a little bit excited and especially we still have not yet seen our mallards show up yet. So and now I shouldn't say that they could have shown up in the last day or so um, because I haven't been out scouting. So they very well could have shown up in the last day or so. I'll know tomorrow because I'm scouting tomorrow um, being, no, it doesn't even matter. Um, so I'm scouting tomorrow, but we still haven't seen the ducks. Like there's geese around. There's a lot of geese around, I think. Oh, yeah. um, and, and everything, like if you look around now, like all the farmers are taking all their crop off now. Everything is, everything's coming down. Those bean fields are coming down. All that silage is, is coming down. All the corn's coming. Like everything's coming off. So there's lots of food. For the, for the geese around, but we're just not seeing those friggin' ducks, and and that's what gets my heart pumping. In fairness, like I still have some standing corn. Yeah, I still have yeah some full full properties that have not been touched. That's nuts, man. Well, I nuts. Guess. I don't know. Oh well, what is? Well, you know what? If anything. Uh, the only the only thing I keep telling myself is, well, hopefully this means that the uh, that the late season is going to be going to be amazing. Which which only which only looks only works well for us because we're still chasing them in the cold weather when when a lot of fellas pack it in by that time, right? And they're no longer doing it. So um, and for whatever reason, they just. They're not doing it at that time, so uh, it's good for it's good for people like us because we're we're still doing it now. I gotta say because you brought up the burn burner, let's talk about that new whiskey that you're that you're into here now. Let let's let's do a little. I think I think we should, especially the episodes when Merck isn't on, um, because Merck doesn't drink. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Uh, for those that don't know, Mark, Mark doesn't drink anymore. So um, on the episodes when Mark isn't here, I think we should devote at least five minutes to talking about a new whiskey, <laughs> rum, something. It's, it, it's funny you mentioned that. Mark doesn't drink anymore. Mm -hmm. You cut out, buddy. What'd you say? I said, like, like, oh, your screen was getting all... Oh, Gidgety yeah. Dog. So yeah, you said, so like you said, Mark doesn't drink anymore, and you and I don't drink any less. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Yeah. I like it a lot. It is, I just picked this up yesterday. This is made by Maverick Distillery. It's called the Barn Burner. It's like a handcrafted, isn't it? All of it handcrafted. I would think so. I was just going to say, how do you not handcraft liquor, but whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I just drink it. I don't make it. Yeah. But uh, it is called Barn Burner. It is a small batch Canadian whiskey. It is 41.6%. Um, they actually, so it's based out of Oakville. 
and you can go on okay. the website maverick distillery and it gives you like the little write-up okay. um so like i was drinking last night talking to my buddy i'm like i, I do like i just got this new whiskey i'm like you need to buy this shit i don't know how you're gonna find it where you're gonna i don't give a shit you need to buy some yeah. of this yeah i'm like it has a slight smoky taste with what i felt was like a maple undertone <laughs> So then, then I go read like the write up on the website. I'm like, dude, like you can order this shit straight from their straight from the distillery. Like they'll send it to your house because he lives out in Nova Scotia, right? And um, and it says like you know it's got some fruity this and that, blah blah blah, and like something about smoky. I'm like, I was right. I was right. That, that stuff is delicious. Really, eh? I'm gonna. I'll give it a try. I, I'll try and find it this week and see if you I can. Like your store, it comes in like a twenty six. Yeah. You go on like the, the actual Maverick Distillery website and they have 40 ounces. Free shipping what? over $75. Well, it's 240 ounces. Hey, for, for, uh, and now that I know, and I can say this for, for certain, I know we have a ton of listeners in the States. Millions. Um, and listen, you have no idea the cost of shipping up here in Canada. So free shipping in Canada, it's it's well worth it. Now you've got me sold. Yeah, Go buy it. this. Oh yeah. Oh, the American there'd be there would be a revolt if this stuff was happening. What if what was happening in Canada has happened down in the states? They would they would revolt. They would be like, this is ridiculous. I can't I can't live like this. Could you imagine if we could order liquor from the states like willy nilly? Oh, buddy, I got to make a bird, trip across bird, the book. Bird so bird dog would be out of stock. <laughs> so I'm still trying to figure out. So they sent me a message a while ago saying that they were going to be in Canada soon. Now, I don't know how much more longer it's going to be before, but I got to I'll send them another message and, and see what they say. But I got to make a, a, a trip to uh, New York here in a week or so. So, uh, Hopefully, I can restock the the bird dog. Hopefully. You think of your but friend. I, I will, uh, but I I don't know because it'll only be like that couple hour trip, right? So I don't know how much I'm allowed to bring back. I think it's only one bottle, right? None, I don't, none. I think. Oh, none. If it's only oh, you got to be there more than twenty four hours to bring back a bottle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you, you need to be gone like, like at least twenty four hours to declare that you brought alcohol right well and i'm a law-abiding citizen and uh, would never in my right mind try to cheat the canadian government so never. out of taxes no, no. I hate taxes yeah, I, I agree they, they tax my income they, then they tax it again when i need to spend it yeah yeah overtaxed um Anyways, getting down a rabbit hole here. Yeah. Um, did want to say, uh, watching um, Jeff Coates, um, Pit Boss Waterfowl, watching his social media, looks like he had an absolute smasher of a day today. Um, I don't know what day it is for him. Um, but uh, he had, He's yeah. almost at his high point of the season. Is and it? It sucked. It was a 60-day season. Yeah, I know. I know. And we're like 105, uh, 107 days, whatever it is. Yeah. And this is his last season too for the, the special sea duck season or some some the numbers are changing next year, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Numbers are changing drastically next year. We were talking about it down in PEI. I don't want to say what what it was because um I'm guaranteed I'm gonna screw it up. I'll screw up the numbers and, and the species of birds. So I'm not gonna say anything, but I do know that numbers are changing down in Maryland on the Eastern shore um, next year. Um, so, and with that, I did get a, he's starting to fill up already for next year. Like oh, fellas are, cool. holy smokes, man. Like he's filling up already. Yeah. Right. When like, when you got a good thing going, like guys will start like, as they're leaving their existing trip, they're booking yeah. for next year already. It's like, wild. He, Jeff, he told Jeff me. Jeff is one of those one of those guys. Like you know, he he puts on a show. Jeff himself yep. is a, is a character all his own. Absolutely. 
Um, but yeah, like, you know, guys that run hunts like Jeff do, you know, get same with like Tony Vandemore, like yeah. well, two years out, like, yeah, fair. You know, yeah. Guys, they've established themselves. They got a good mm-hmm. thing going at the end of the day, though, you still can't guarantee birds. No, it is what it is. It is what it is. But you know, they're still doing reasonably well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, they, they are. They're still doing reasonably well. I think the wet, the first couple of days of his season, I think the weather was was sort of kind of wonky. I think they had a big system move in with a lot of wind. So first couple of days, I don't think he got out. But after that, I think he's been doing, I think he's been pretty steady out every day, I, I believe, anyways. So so that's good. But that, that brings up a, a really cool thing that you just said. So <laughs> I I guess I'm... I guess I really know it, but I didn't realize it um, that these guys, you know, book up a year in advance or two years in advance. Like you look at like Claudio Angaro out in Alberta and Saskatchewan with Daryl Gilbert. You look at Tony Vandemore with Habitat Flats. Look at, you know, Jeff Coates with Pit Boss Waterfowl. Um, and, and you know, who's who's these other guys like Cadillac Creek and, and all of these guys that are down south. Like, they probably do book up years in advance. Yeah. And that, you know, so now I, I'm I'm not naive to think that everybody um, is great guides and, and everybody will always, you know, uh, put you in the best accommodations the best area, the best chance at birds, all that stuff, because it's a crapshoot, right? Especially when you depend on the weather so much, like, like we do for, for hunting waterfowl. Well, but, it only takes 24 hours for everything to change. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not taking anything away from any guide and, and you've guided Phil and, and same with Ryan, um, you know, but when you're looking for a guide, so let, so let's say if you're looking for a guide to take you out this weekend, let's say. Now, if you called up a fella who's a guide and he says he's available this weekend, and, and I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm going to ask you your opinion. What if you had if you had two guides, one was booked solid, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm not a chance. You're not getting in at all this year." Or you got the guys like, "Oh yeah, I got room. I got room anytime." What is your like? Are you thinking, well, what? How come this guy isn't booked up solid like the other guy after we're in the same area? Like, does that is that something that crosses your mind? I don't have a ton of experience with guides and and the ones that i do have you know they've been they've been really really good so i i haven't had a bad experience with a guide so i really don't like you can you can kind of see like you take it for what it take it for what it is and for what it's worth in in your own your own opinion and whatnot um like i could see there you know being red flags right like th- this guy's booked, you know, months in advance, year in advance, whatever. So obviously, like, there's a legit reason for that. You know, like existing customers, yeah, they've gone out, they've had banger hunts, mm-hmm. and they're like, this guy has his shit together, and this was next level. Yeah. So you know, if someone's like, hey, I'm looking for a guide. I was on a hunt a month ago. You need to call this guy. Yeah. You're not going to get him this year, but you're going to, you know, it's it's a right. ripple effect, right? Yeah, you know, it is you, big you time. Continually put out good hunts, um, and I was fortunate when, like, when I started the business, I had God knows how many friends like pumping the shit out of my name. Yeah, and people that I've hunted with, so like they, you know, they, they knew what I was doing. Yeah. Um, but then you know, you have some like you know, say like the lesser known guides. Then you know they might not you know be huge into like social media. That's right. And, you know, promoting themselves and this and that. And yeah, like they're just not known about. They could be yep. putting on banger hunts too. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they do it on a casual basis and, you know, 
it's, it's a part-time thing for them not a full-time job yeah good point that's that's another aspect but then yeah like there could be you know guys that just you know say they have a last minute cancellation we've seen that yeah we're like top-notch guides hey mm-hmm. we just had a weekend come up for like two weeks from now cancellation yeah. you know you get lucky right but yeah, yeah then you get you know, some of these guides that don't know their head from a hole in the ground i guess so, th- there's, yeah there's I, a lot of that's, different, a lot of different angles and yeah that was a good point that you brought up about you know may, maybe it's a guy that's doing it on on part time um when he can he's not he doesn't have a huge social media presence um not out there flooding social media and and the internet with pictures and stuff that he or she is doing um but still can put together a great hunt and 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 when i say put together a great hunt i mean it's organized um good equipment it's safe um accommodations are good and food is good the birds the guide can only do so much when it comes to putting you on birds right so um so yeah i've I've taken buddies out for field shoots and you know you find a field like i remember this this is a number of years ago had a field i can't remember how many birds it was holding 400 600 like it was it was a thick field and temps dropped huge overnight and like i would imagine if we had toughed it out all day we might have might have done it but like we went from like 600 seeing 600 birds to shooting three is what it is it is what it is it's like right. sh- short of tying the damn things to the corn mm-hmm. stalk so they can't fly away <laughs> like what are you gonna do <laughs> like at the, at the not- end of the day though like i'm kind of i'm st- slowly starting to get into that mindset where for me it's not about shooting birds like i've killed a pile it's great yeah. the ultimate is the same yeah it's, it's, it's just being out there yeah like, and, and then you know as like you you've been talking and seeing with uh with bobby hayes like you know like the it right yeah it's not about shooting birds like, again like when i went to your deck went to your duck camp two years ago yeah i left the gun at home it didn't yeah. matter to, to like it was great going down hunting long point because i'd never been yeah you know, whole, whole new uh new new environment you know new scenery yeah epic experience um but i would have been just as happy leaving the gun at home yeah so th- i'd like to i'd like to touch a little bit more on that so and i gotta give a, a shameless plug here philly um for those of you that don't know, we launched a new show this week. Um, so Punisher Waterfowl launched a new show. This isn't entirely our show. It was the idea of Bobby Hayes from Duckland Recalls. He approached us to help him put this show off um, as he felt that we were very neutral when it come to um, the waterfowling world. And uh, he really didn't want to have this turn into a um this brand versus that brand or or anything like that he just wanted to have an honest to god conversation so that's why he came to us so um on this first episode and we had jeff coates on with us we had talked about what our it is what gets us going and so phil now i know you just said you you don't care about um, shooting the birds because you you've shot a lot of birds over your over your career um but still what is it like there has to be that one thing that you just absolutely love that everything builds up to just that one thing and that is what we consider the it for you what would you say it is as everyone knows I love my small water and my small guns. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like sitting under that tree, you know, standing in some small swamp and like, you know, trudging through that swamp, putting out decoys, smelling that loon shit. Like I wish they could bottle it and call it cologne. 
Um, but <laughs> Dana to have nothing to do with you. Gone. <laughs> um, but for me, it's just like I, I don't want to say it's kind of like that intimate moment, but it's just it's being being close to the birds when they work and being yeah. in that you know that small ecosystem right you yeah that you know, small it, little piece of earth yeah yeah it, it's standing in that little pond standing in that little creek just you know being so close to everything like yeah it's great being out in a, you know 500 acre cornfield and yeah. see your birds coming from a three quarters of a mile that's awesome mm -hmm. but to be sitting there and all of a sudden birds are birds are raining down and you're popping them at 15 yards yeah that's what does it for me is tricking them to coming in that close being that well hidden you know and i can't even say you can rely on decoys that much because like i only put yeah. out a dozen for a lot of these yeah. small shoots that i do mm -hmm. but it's just that very close knit tight environment and just, you know, so everything being there, like at your fingertips to the, you know, the birds coming down, the smell of that wet dog sitting next to you, like it's small water and small guns is what does it for me. Wow. Small water, small guns. I like it. I got to make note and to make note for that. And we'll talk about it at, at the next show. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell the boys cause they're, the boys were like, we want to know what everybody's it is. Cause they're trying to figure out how many different it's there really are out there right and and like everybody everybody's probably got their own little thing right like not everybody is going to be the same my thing was that i think i was saying what i thought was the right answer and and i've come to the realization that so you know i've always said well, i don't care i don't care about the birds um i just like just being outside but that's a total crock of shit on my part because i care about birds i i i scout i i set up my decoys i i practice calling i train my dog i do all of the work to shoot birds that is what i want to do actually hold on i gotta back up because my my it I don't need to shoot the bird personally, personally, Damien doesn't need to shoot the bird, but I need to be where birds are shot because watching my dog work is what does it for me. That is the most, that is what does it for me. So personally, I don't need to shoot the birds, but birds need to be shot in order for my dog to work because that's what I love. And like having, having run, like obviously everyone, everyone knows my old melon head there, Thor. Mm -hmm. Absolute fucking legend. As far as brown dogs go. Um, as far as brown dogs go, yeah. Yeah, as far as brown dogs go. But seeing that dog work and the drive and the desire in that dog. Like I, I remember I was out, I was guiding, guiding a gentleman on a duck hunt and we were, like I kid you not, it was like the first first weekend into duck season. So like duck season six, seven days old, right? And this so year? Still warm. No, this not was this, this year. was oh, okay. this, this was back when I had the mud boat. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. And, um so like again, like it's your end of September, early October. So it's still warm. And we're hunting some smaller water out in the duck boat. And um he was up at the front of the boat with Thor because Thor, it's like the Titanic, right? He's got to sit up at the front and like the wind in his ears and whatever, right? So we get to the spot, get the decoys laid out. We get hidden all this other jazz. He's like, you know, Phil, um, like, I think your dog's a little on the cold. So I think he's cold. I'm like, what do you mean dog? I mean, it's, it's 15 degrees out, bud. Yeah. He's cold. He's like, well, he was shaking. The whole drive, like from the bolt ramp to here, I'm like, that, being cold. No, that's, that's yeah, that's excitement. That's, that's what drive. that is. Yeah, and like being out doing field shoots, and like I'll, I'll tell you another story after this. Being out and doing field shoots, 
and watching that dog go after a crippled goose at 150 yards and watching him spank that thing like it fucking owes him money. <laughs> so, so we were out. So I gotta, I gotta, I'll cut you off and then you can tell your next story. Um, yeah, back and forth. So we were out um, last week. Mark came down, took our good buddy Jason Sear out with us. Um, that hit a hole that uh, that I spend a lot of time in, and and went to a different side of this hole. Um, it, it's it's a fairly big area. Um, a lot of uh, it's big water. Um, it's a big so, hole. Yeah, it's a big gaping hole. So, anyways, we go up, sort of set up in a in an area where. I, I'm not too, too familiar with, but I know there's birds. I know there's birds that are, so we're, we're really just hoping to, to get something as it's flying past and, and that we can hook it in, right? So anyways, some mallards, some mallards come by. I've got my gun down. I don't even have my gun in my hands. I've got the phone because I'm trying, I'm trying to video it, right? Get some reels. And, so yeah, get some reels for doing it for the gram. So, um, so I hear, I hear Mark go, yeah, they're coming. So I get down low, start the camera and, and I got the camera up and then I hear take them. So I come up and bird goes down. So soon as soon as I see a bird go down, my, my attention now is no longer on filming. It's on my dog because my dog is like Thor. I'm really excited, a lot of drive. And I don't want her and she still needs that little reminder that, hey, listen, you don't go until I tell you to go, right? So she still needs that little reminder. So bird goes down. I'm not focused on recording anymore. I, and I'm watching the dog, right? So of course, um, head still up. I take a shot because I'm on the left side. I take a shot to, to finish off the bird. I thought I finished the bird. Um, and then I sent the dog, right? Of course, bird's not completely done. And I could see her and she's just cooking, right? Like, and you know, my dog, my dog's small. So she's fast and she's just cooking through the water, just creating a wake. And this, this duck is swimming away from her. And I'm like, oh boy, this is going to go on for all night now. Cause I know Lander will never, ever give up on it. Right. And I see it swim towards some cattails and I'm like, that's the worst thing you could have done right there, duck. Don't go in there because she'll get you for sure. So, and she had went around a point and I'm like, oh man, okay. I got to get out of the boat, boys. I got to go. I got to go find her because God knows, like she'll go, she'll swim the full length of this, yeah. this she'll lake. Make her, right? She'll make her way to wave right the fucking Atlantic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I got to go. And just as I, I, you know, I'm getting everything ready. I can hear the... I was like, is that her? And Mark's like, yep, here she is. And she got the duck too. And she comes around this little point and she's got, she's got this duck in her mouth, right? And I'm like, proud as a peacock. That, and I, yeah. And, and you know what? She's proud. I'm proud because, you know, I put in all this time to train her, all this hard work, spent the money to buy a good dog that I knew the lineage of, all that stuff, right? And then to know that I'm taking two friends out and, and they're knocking down birds and we're not going to lose any. That, that's a proud, proud moment for me, right? So that's my, like, I get so excited watching her come back and she, she just loves it, right? She loves, she comes back to the boat, gets the belly rubs, gets all kinds of good girls and, and, right. and then sit down and get ready for the next one. So Add a little bit of a proud moment for me. Anyways, oh, your story. Oh, so, Thor. My Thor is like super close with my dad. Like my dad comes over to visit, like he loses his mind when he sees my dad. We go hunting last week. Took my dad out for that little shoot, and we smashed a, a limited mallards, which was awesome. Like, yeah, shooting, shooting, you know, limited ducks each with my father. First time him and I have ever done that, so it was, it was an awesome moment. But my dad, my dad mentions like being out there with Thor. He's like, that dog does not give two shits if I'm <laughs> here or not. And that, that is true. Being yeah. out there with that dog, like, you know, he'll, he'll do anything like, you know, for a little treat or like, he loves his carrots. Carrots yeah. is like his go-to. 
And if for anyone that wants to know, carrots You've to got dogs, a vegan dog? Carrots to dogs is like corn to humans. Just so you I'm not I don't really understand that statement, Phil. I'm not feed a your huge dogs corn and carrots. Guy. Feed your dogs and carrots, go out in the backyard in two days. You'll know. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. Anyway, so we're out. <laughs> like you, you, you wheel around a dead duck or a bumper in front of that dog. It don't matter who the fuck you are. You ain't going to exist to that dog. Yeah. So we hunted. And now, obviously, because Thor's nine and a half now. Yeah. The old boy's getting me. up there. Mm -hmm. So we, we've eliminated a lot of hunts and a lot of work. Just, you know, he still wants to go. But yeah, the mind's moving one speed. Body's moving another, right? Yeah. So right. he hunt. He had he had a good hunt that morning. Said so we shot twelve mallards. It's a small pond, so like you, you're not going far. You're not dragging ten pound geese two hundred yards across goddamn cornfield. Mm -hmm. So I took a friend back the next day, and we got we got five five ducks and a goose. But this is the first time I've ever seen Thor do this. So like he's got his own little layout blind. So like depending on you know. The hunt, you know, I can put some stubble in it and shit. And you sit there and you watch that blind all morning and it just shakes. <laughs> it could be 20 degrees out or it could be minus five. Is that he, blind the whole time will shake. Is is Thor a uh like a whimper? Like where he's <laughs> no, he's quiet. quiet oh, see, he won't oh, say shit. see, Lander is yeah, she's, she's like, oh she fuck yeah. Yeah, but this is like, and this, and this is where I know Thor is getting old. Well, so I went back the second day, so, and, and it's not too often, especially now where I'll hunt Thor two days in a row. Yeah, but I'm like, this is small water, non-issue. Yeah, this was the first time in nine and a half years I've seen that dog lay his chin on the ground. Wow, tired, eh? Just tired. It, it's hard man like and and people um all pet owners would understand it i i know for now um working dog owners i think understand it a little bit more because there is that bond that relationship between the dog like yeah like I, I i can't even i can't even put it to words the the bond and the relationship you have with a working dog right so and and like you said nine and a half years old buddy like there's been a lot of birds brought back to your hand in nine and a half years right so uh so to see him to see him and and that he's got to take a take a knee and and you know what i i just got to take a break yeah it, it's got to be heard um and and that not that I, I know this was pur uh, purposeful, but, you know, our good friend, past, past guest on the show, Matt Pomeroy, who was on, you know, a bunch of episodes ago, talked to us about fitting shotguns and, and shooting and stuff like that. He had just had had a new pup. I think he had only had his pup um, eight days. Um, a yeah. super, super smart dog. I was watching some of the training that Matt was doing with his with the pup, and it, he had named the pup puck um but just uh just yesterday um puck passed away um had some had was taking some crazy seizures and stuff like that so um really thinking about you matt i know you're listening to the show and and um on behalf of all of us we're real sorry to hear about puck um but if love could have kept him alive i he'd have lived for he'd have lived forever and and that's the same with with uh, Thor and, and any of the other dogs. Now you bring up Thor. How is Zeus doing? How about that local sports team? <laughs> Brown dog, right? Yeah, he, he's he's good. He's good. Yeah. Um, him and I just need to spend a little bit more time together. Like obviously, mm -hmm. uh, for his first. First year he got farmed out, went to Brent Samus, the Samus gun yeah. retrievers. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know what Brent's formal kennel name is. Yeah. But if anyone's looking for a good trainer, Brent yeah. Samus. Um yeah. there's very few people in this world that I trust with my dog. Um Brett's Brent's definitely one of them. Yeah. Um his his titles speak for themselves. Yeah. Like say what you want about, you know, 
competing with dogs, it's not. When you've got a trainer that's taken dogs to the grand level and have mm-hmm. passed and have yeah. gone to the master national and have passed, that speaks volumes in my books. Like that, yeah. that's a measurable, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but kind of like a measurable figure yeah. to show that they know what the hell they're doing. Oh, it, it justifies them, right? You're freezing up on me, but I got you now. It's um, a yeah. quantitative figure. Ooh, big word like marmalade. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, and 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 you're hundred percent right. Like, uh, the, it says a lot about the dog. It says a lot about the trainer, and it says a lot about the dog that that's got these titles, right? Their ability to learn, their ability to to react and and take instruction and and all that good stuff. Um, I'm here talking like I know everything that uh, about dogs, but really I'm I'm just you know two years into it, and and that's all because of Bill Kennedy and the training I've done with Emory. So yeah, and Bill um, does work. Oh yeah, Bill yeah. Bill knows what he's talking about. Um, yeah. So so what else? Where else are we going here now? I, I just I had something on my brain and and I just lost it and now I'm now I'm like there's, all kinds of mess up. Codfish, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it was probably codfish. Yeah, um, but I, now I'm all messed up because I had this thing that it was gonna it was gonna be a seamless flow into the next topic and I've totally transition. forgot a transition. Yeah, yes, yeah, quite um, uh, a transition. Small gauge guns. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So go for. I don't own a small gauge gun. Um, I'm not anti small gauge guns, but I'll I'll allow you to run with this topic, Philly, because I don't have any any experience to pass on. You need more guns. That's what you. Need. I I do need more guns, more but guns. Um, you know so, what? I'm. So I agree with you. I, I do need more guns. I do want I do want a 20 gauge. I, I, I am hoping that next year uh, for next season, I will be rocking a 20 gauge. I'm hoping so. You but, keep talking. I'll be right here. I'm going to go. Get okay. Some, but I'll be okay. right there. I can All still right. hear. But when it comes to, so I've got a gun that works well for me now. I'm shooting, I shoot Beretta. Um, and I love that gun. It fits me well. Um, it works. I had never had an issue with it. So I've got a, I've got to justify spending the money on a new gun when I don't need it. But so I'm such, (laughs) but I'm such a, a decoy, um, rigs calls, I'm that type of guy. Like that's where my money goes. Um, So unless um, Beretta, you know, the the president of Beretta slips and bumps his head tonight and starts shipping me free guns, I won't be getting a new 20 gauge anytime soon. Oh, what? Oh, is that the ethos? I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Um. So like everyone knows, like I'm, I'm a huge advocate for the 20 gauge. Um, I couldn't tell you how many guys have bought 20 gauges. It was because of me, but I'm like, like you got to try this. Like, yeah, this is a lot of fun. And I, I've been through several 20s, and I've I, I've worked my way up to the uh, to the Benelli M2, which is like the bread and butter of small water 20 gauges. It is so nice. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the longest time, I've dabbled on and off, on and off with a 28. And like everyone knows, like Tony Vandemore, he runs a 28 quite often, you know, for the shoots that he does. Again, it's all, you know, small, smaller water stuff. And he's shooting, you know, not steel, but, you know, steel alternative, non toxic shot. Um, and then obviously our good friend, Brendan Veerman. He got yeah. a 28, I think it was what, last season? Yeah. Last well, season. No, I think it was on the off season, right? I know you, I'm pretty I sure think... he was shooting it last year. Okay. Anyways, 
Yeah. So Brendan, Brendan stepped into the 28 and he's like, yeah, like this is awesome. And obviously we hunted together for duck opener and I'd seen what the 28 could do. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. I'm like, we're on a lake. Like not even yeah. a pond, or a creek, a marsh, swamp. We're on a lake. Yeah. Shooting decoying birds and he's popping them with that 28 and stone killing them. Like not just mm-hmm. dropping them and then you got to put another one in. No, dead. Dead before they hit the water. Yeah. So stupid me because I like my toys. And I love love my Benelli's because I own like four now. They're little little something something kind of showed up. Little something something kind of appeared in the safe, you know, the other day. So I got the Ethos. So this is just like the regular Ethos. Um, so there's like the Super Sport, like the Ethos Cordoba, which is like all blacked yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the Cordoba is what uh, Corey Baker shoots, I believe. He's got like pre ethos Cordoba uh, okay. when it was just the Cordoba. Oh, okay. In, in twenty in twenty gauge. Okay. Um, so ethos. If you go on the ethos or if you go on the USA's website, there's like there's like the ethos best. So the best is the Benelli surface treatment which the, the Ethos, it only comes in a 12 gauge with that version. There's the Ethos Sport, which looks just like this one, but mm-hmm. like this is engraved. I don't know if we can see it on the camera. We can. Yeah, you can. So that's yeah, all, you that, can. That's all engraved. The Benelli Ethos Sport is not. It's just kind of okay. like, looks yeah. kind of like this. So you can get the 28 gauge in the Ethos Sport with a 28 inch barrel. Or this is just the regular ethos. So if you look on their website, it actually looks like it just has like a black receiver. Well, you scroll yeah. through and you pick the 28 gauge and it comes like this all nice and pretty but with the 26 inch barrel, which is kind of like what I wanted. Um, I've always run 26 inch barrels on my 20s because that's like the standard length. Yeah. Um, now that I've got the Super Black Eagle 3 in 20 gauge, purposely bought that with a 28 inch barrel just for like that touch extra weight to see you know see how it spins and it's a beautiful gun this is a little more beautiful but for any of those that think you know you need a 12 gauge three and a half inch gun to drop ducks oh sure like if, if you want to be you know sky busting them at 50 60 yards whatever right different strokes different folks mm-hmm Everyone knows I love my small water and small guns, especially now having this thing. Anything under 30 yards, it's good night, Irene. Yeah. The, like but we are will kill ducks. Guys, guys in the south, in the timber, in the swamps. Yeah. Some of them will shoot four tens. Yeah. Um, kill ducks. But that's something, you know, we're seeing it like with within our group of friends, Phil. Um, and and it spans quite a quite a number of groups of people but with our acquaintance like it is something that is growing exponentially season after season so you're 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 stopping seeing no longer are you seeing a lot of fellas shooting three and a half inch shells a lot of fellas are going down to to three inch i even know some guys that are shooting two and three quarter um, and now you're starting to see a lot of people going to these sub gauges and they're going down below the 12 gauge. Um, and, and, you know, for whatever reason, but it is, it is growing and, and it is something that, that there is a community within the waterfowl community that, you know, love these 20, 28 gauge guns and, and all the calls. And, and they're working like that's the that's the other thing and, and you made a good point like I'm shooting a 12 gauge and only because I bought a 12 gauge and I just haven't gotten around to buying a 20. Um, yeah you just haven't woke up yet. It, that's right I haven't seen the light no. but but anybody that says that you need a 12 gauge to shoot geese or to shoot ducks, but uh, I, I don't know their I don't know their reasoning and I don't know their science because I've been around enough people that shooting twenty and uh, that shooting twenty and twenty eight gauge shotguns 
and and are dropping birds. So I, I don't know what the the argument of not going here. Here's some food for thought. Like the full price of animal for twelve and twenty is the same price. Okay. Like at the end of the day, like um, the animal, the animal that I'm using, yeah, I come out at fifteen. Like the the steel shot twenty gauge stuff that I use, the number twos, it's yeah. coming out at fifteen fifty feet per second at a seven eight seven eight ounce load. That's okay. rocking. Yeah. Okay. That's moving. Um, one of my fellow staffer buddies who lives down in the States, um, through, you know, talking to him and stuff, you know, he, he saw the light and got himself a 20 gauge. I'm pretty sure he got a Frankie, I think. Okay. Anyway, Great guns. So like this will, I think we had this story. I, I told you this story on our hunt, but I'll tell our millions and millions of listeners. Um, so he goes on like a five day snow goose hunt. Yeah, with a bunch, with a bunch of buddies, like six, eight guys, big group, week long hunt, or five day hunt, whatever. Brings the twenty out on the first day, gets freaking ridiculed. What are you doing with that gun? Blah blah blah. So of course, like he, he feels like a like a huge vagine, puts puts the gun back in the case and rocks the twelve for the trip. Last day of the hunt, he's like, "Screw you guys! I brought this gun. I'm shooting this gun." He pulls the twenty out. I don't know what his choke choke and shell combination wise i do know this he spent the time to properly pattern his gun because like we had in-depth conversations about this for days on end so he spent the time patterning the gun and such We're out there snow goose hunting and like for those i've never hunted snow geese but like i've watched mm -hmm. more than enough youtube i've seen the end of it um like they're doing like that vertical descent yeah so they're like you're, you're, you're popping them 30 30 40 yards like you know you're decent pokes right so he's got the 20 in his hands. Well, his boy's got the 12s. Birds are coming. Guy calls a shot. He jumps up, laced a snow at 40 yards, like dead before it hit the ground. Not a peep out of the rest of the crew. <laughs> Funny Not how me. that happens, eh? You've never hunted snows, eh? No. We well, should. I, I, I've, I've, I've seen snows in my area and yeah. to hunt those. To we should. Perhaps, uh, perhaps next week I'll uh, get a hold of Dave Roy at uh, St. Lawrence Outfitters and plan something for the spring. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I know you yeah. would be, um, and go go down with with uh, St. Lawrence Outfitters and and uh, and try and, uh, and try and get in at these the way that, there's so like it's aside so from that hunt aside like if, if we do the snow goose hunt. Aside from that hunt, it is my goal this entire waterfowl season to not touch my 12 gauge. Well, I don't think that to be hard to achieve. Like you, well, like, you've got well, for me, it's come later season, ah, like, you get okay. into like December, early January, or you get into like you know the late season, yeah. February, March, shooting those big, big, thick armor plated thick. Canadas. Yeah, but. I may just run the 20 gauge number four bismuth and just let him just give him the good news. There you go. That's Shoot awesome. him in the face. Shoot him in the face. Yeah. But I'm going to be keep shooting this 28 as long as I can this season. Love it. Eh? With, without ruining the gun. It's a Benelli, buddy. You're not going to ruin it. No, you won't ruin it by it. using it. As much as I love my pretty guns, and believe me, I've grown right fond of this thing pretty damn quick. I'm already kind of thinking maybe, oh, I'm getting put on hold. I'll keep talking to the millions of listeners. As much as I love this pretty gun and love my pretty guns, um, with my new affliction with shooting a 28, I know I'm going to ruin this poor thing. So I'm seriously thinking about maybe giving up this thing and going to the Ethos Cordoba 28. This I can get, I think, a 28 inch barrel. And it's not nearly as pretty. It's got like the straight black receiver, black synthetic stocks. And I can beat on that poor thing. But if I'm going to shoot a 28 in any kind of sort of volume, like what I'm starting to think I'm going to, yeah. I think this poor little thing is going to go up for sale. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, now, now that now shooting a twenty eight, 
I will, I will never go without a 28 gauge. Eh, perhaps I'm going to have to dive into this 20. I won't go. I, I'll dip my toe. I'll go yeah, to yeah. a 20. Yeah, yeah. I'll, di- I'll get a 20. Um, I'll dip my toe into the pool before I go uh, full on yeah. cannonball um, and, and drop into the, into the 28 gauge. Yeah. Um, sort of small water hunting. Like I, I, I could even, I could even use this at a pheasant farm. I could use it for grouse hunting. Like there's, you know, so many things you can do, right? Mm-hmm. But so much fun. And like this gun weighs five and a half pounds. Hmm. Five and a half. It's not yeah. Good. And, and, uh, and your follow-up shot would be. There's no recoil. On. Yeah. There's no so bang recoil. On. Yeah. This is like shooting a 22. Hmm. Like, it's like when dad and I, when dad and I went and shot the pond that first time, so it was the first time I've ever shot this gun. <laughs> Christ, I went through three quarters of a box of shell because I was just shooting at everything. It was so much fun. <laughs> just killing everything. Yeah, but just then, shooting at everything. Oh, I'm still, still trying to get used to the gun, right? Yeah. But when I went back the next day and I, I dropped three drakes, three drake greenheads, three shots. Nice. Three yeah. Three. Awesome. Yeah. That's the old, old man got tired. Yeah. He I, got tired. I, I, got little, I got a little uh, fucking dust in my eye. Yeah. Yeah. That happens yeah, to the best that, of us, buddy. Like I said, like that that boy, he he run full tilt piss and vinegar 94 fucking octane all day long. Well, yeah. Like see, seeing them in that blind and like that one time, like, you know, he put his head on the ground. I'm like, mm-hmm. you're you're getting old. Yeah. So so am I, but but yeah, I'm like you're getting old, boy. Like it's the first time I've ever seen him ever put his chin on the ground in that blunt. And I'm like, oh. we're 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 got, we're starting down that fucking road. Oh, that's too bad, buddy. Yeah, that's too bad. Oh well. Anyways, buddy. Um, great, great show. We're at that hour mark, uh, roughly. Oh, what? So. <laughs> do you have summer as uh, fucking be? Uh, actually, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I've got, uh, I've got a business to run. And, according, and you know, according what? to according to my clock, we still yeah. have twenty one minutes of recording time. Twenty one minutes. Early. Oh, did we? Yeah. We started. Early. Yeah. Yeah, we did start it. Okay. Oh well, I don't. I don't know how much time. I don't know how long we've been going. I'm just estimating that we've been on. Yeah. Um, so, so for okay. the millions of listeners, we'll, we'll give you we'll give you some backstory to the Punisher Waterfowl podcast. Mm-hmm. So because of my retarded fucking schedule, which has gotten even more retarded now, um, we record the shows Wednesday Wednesdays or Thursday nights. Yeah. So we generally. Like we generally get on, like obviously the five of us that are part of the show, we have like our Facebook yep. messenger chat. We we send stupid jokes back and forth. These these donkeys talk about hockey and some other nonsense. Um so we record the shows Wednesdays and Thursday nights, or Wednesday yep. or Thursday. And it, it, it was mm-hmm. dependent on my schedule. Yeah. So we get on the show, we get we get on about 6 30. So after dinner, we'll have our half hour of like back and forth nonsense or like if we have a guest mm. we'll get the guest on we kind of prep the guest during that you know first half an hour and just shoot the shit with them and then yeah. we generally record said show from seven till eight and then obviously the shows get aired on mondays mm-hmm. so damien and i because it's just the two of us tonight and i'm like i still want to do the show because i miss a bunch and it sucks yeah we started early so we now have 19 minutes of recording time left. Just no, and, and and no, and it's good too that you, that you give this that this a little bit of a of an explanation. So we for the millions miss, of listeners. Yeah, right for the millions of listeners. Yeah, almost 10,000 downloads, dude. Like, like um, we have, we have some smart people. I think his name's Dave. Dave's not here. <laughs> Dave's but not like, here, man. You guys like extract extract the audio, and then like make it a podcast. I would never know how to fucking do that. Well, so, so Dave is on a crazy, like, and it is insane 
Dave's work schedule right now, right? So, um, so for the new, so for the new show, I've been doing, I've been doing everything, right? So I edited it, I done all the posts, I done, I've done everything. The only thing left was um, putting it to the podcast. So I got it on YouTube. And, and done all that stuff, all the editing work, but then it was left to the podcast, which is where the majority of the people listen, right? Because as they're driving to work, driving to hunt, whatever, um, they just, they download it and listen to it as they're driving or piddling around in their garage or whatever. So I'm like, I got to get it out on the podcast because that's where most people listen to it. Um, so I, I'm like, patting myself on the back and I'm like I've done an awesome job on this I've edited it myself oh yeah buddy I'm I'm I've edited it myself I've done the show all by myself I've done everything all by myself and I even got it on the podcast I thought I had it on the podcast it wasn't on the podcast <laughs> Dave, Dave messaged me and he was like um did you upload it on the podcast? I was like, yeah. He was like, did you do this, this, and this? And I was like, yeah. He was like, hmm, weird. I don't see it. I was like, huh, that is weird. I was like, maybe I'll go back and check it again. And he was like, yeah, may maybe just double check it. So I went back and double check it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't post it. So, well, and the just... important, and the important thing about that is that um, I, we've got a ton of friends that now are, yeah, they're our friends, right? Like they, they message us, they chat Family. with us and stuff. What's that? Family. Family. That's right. Um, so we had this two week span where there was no shows just because of, of schedules and, and right. everything, right? So we had two weeks with no shows. The amount of messages I got People because their minds well and and for and it's not it's not for like there was dudes that this was what they listened to on their commute in the mornings to go to work right and yeah. and and don't, they're missing don't, it so, don't screw with the schedule yeah exactly right like they, they were looking forward and then so so one guy one guy messed me trevor davidson and he's like he's like dude Let's go. Come on. We got to get this back up and going. Like uh, I'm, I'm missing out. Like uh, I don't know what to be doing right now. Uh, and then Greg Taylor out in BC is messaging me and the, there's people. So um, when it was just you and I, and I had said, do you really want to do the show tonight? It's just you and I. And you were like, yeah, no, let's, let's do it. I was like, yes, because I really didn't want that do another week with, with no show. Um, because and, and listen, we're very humble and and don't think that we think we're we're anything special. But it and really, really, I get to spend an hour with my favorite new fee. There you go. There you go. Um, so here, but so for, so for our millions of listeners, for our mm -hmm. millions and millions of listeners, here's a fact of Phil. We're gonna, we're gonna have a segment called Facts of Phil. Oh, this should right. be good. I can't listen to a podcast. I can't do it. Really, eh? Yeah. I can't listen. I can't listen to like talk radio. I can't. I I can if I can if if it's a a topic that I'm that I'm into. So so, but I I agree with you. Like I just can't listen to someone ramble on. I can't listen and like I've listened to some podcasts where um the person is very yeah talks like this and hey it's from but like like when i'm, hey, when it's I'm in my me from this company and from here tonight from yeah. here and tonight we're but, gonna talk but i can't i can't fucking do that like that that drives I'm, me bananas if i'm in my truck i need music mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm not a huge music person like i don't download music i've never yep. owned hundreds of cds but like if i'm in my truck radio's going i want mm -hmm. music right but like for me i'm a youtuber okay i love my youtube really so, eh? and, and i'll tell you now like like 
day, days where like I miss an episode, like, you know, I'm not on the show. Yeah. I will sit down in front of my smart TV and I'll fucking sit and sit there for the hour and I will watch our show on YouTube. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Like um, I can't, can't do the podcast. I just can't listen to talk. I, I, I can if it, if it's entertaining. So, which, which brings me to um, how thankful I am to everybody that listens to this show, because I know this isn't for everybody, right? Like this isn't everybody's cup of tea to listen to a couple of idiots ramble on about duck hunting for an hour, right? Like I, I, I get that. I understand that this is not everybody's idea of entertainment. So for, for the people that listen, I am extremely humbled and, and you and, and Mark and Dave and Ryan, um, I know y'all feel the same way uh, because it, it really do make us feel, feel pretty special that your, your time when you could be listen. So first off, you could be listening to ACDC. You could be practically hip. Uh, the hip. Yeah. Okay. Sure. The hip ACDC metal. You could be listening or, or all these, you know, amazing podcasts that are out there. And there are some great podcasts that are out there and shows, but you choose to, to listen, to, to, to take some of your time and to listen to ours. It really is humbling. So um, I can't thank you enough. Um, but if I can ask you one thing though, if I can ask everybody listening, one thing and it would mean the world to me is just go to our youtube channel and subscribe because it it means so everything you're doing on the podcast side it's amazing and it looks amazing and it is amazing and it and um there's all kinds of good things that come from that but i need the i need the youtube channel to grow and and i need you guys to to, to help me out and subscribe to that Go, Phil. And if for those that are like, like huge into podcasts, but not so much like the YouTube side, like David said, please get on the channel, like, subscribe, do some other not hit hit some fucking buttons, okay? Yeah, hit some. Yeah. Ring the bell, boys sure. and girls. Ring the, oh, we need ring more the bells. Bell. Yeah, more. Cal- <laughs> if there's ever whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I've been put on fucking hold. Like talking to like a telemarketer, he's got a fucking bell. Anyways, if there's ever an episode to watch out of all the retarded episodes that we've de- that we've made and whatnot, if there's ever an episode to watch, you gotta watch episode twenty five. I shot Daffy. <laughs> that is like there was a five minute stretch in that episode where you and Ryan could not even speak. You were laughing so hard. It was. I actually was like, I was at work the other day and I was, I was, you know, talking to a coworker, like he's not a big hunter and stuff. I'm like, you know, I do this. And he's like, really? Like, like he was like genuinely interested, like, you know, like what we do in the show. And yeah. I said, I'm like, hold on a second. I have one <laughs> for you. And every time I pull up the I shot Daffy episode. So like, I, 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 I get it. I get it rolling about a minute before we have the yeah. absolute colossal meltdown yeah so we're, we're talking about like you know the banded birds and like if you shot it who gets it who's feel like all this other jazz right and like you can i'm already starting to lose it but like you see me in the episode like starting to like melt <laughs> like you see the eye like i'm already starting to fucking tear up because it's so funny <laughs> I have, I have sensitive eyes. It's fucking horrible. I have sensitive. There's all kinds of dust floating around. But like, you see me sitting there, and like, the giggles start, <laughs> and then the giggles start a little bit more. And then like, I got like my hand over my mouth, and you see me starting to change color. And then like, it's like at the point where it burst out. Like, I got some bad news. <laughs> Shot Maffy. And then Ryan I got- and I like on the floor. I got to rewatch that episode actually because I, I, I could use a good laugh like that. If you were to ever do like, honestly, like for like our hundredth episode. Yeah. Outtakes. Do like, just do a fucking highlight reel. That's, ah, that's a good deal. idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, perhaps, perhaps I will. Good Lord. 
But yeah, like, <laughs> like laughing to the point of tears. Yeah. Um, and, and I wanted to, you know, go, to keep this going a bit. Yeah, uh, Merck, Merck talked about it. I think it was when we hit the, the 50th episode and, uh, you know, we'd done our show and it was a big deal for us, right? Like we had put out 50 episodes of this show. So 50 times we had sat down here and talked about bird hunting and, and you know, we're on episode 74 now. I'm um, going to make our way to, to, to 100 and beyond. But I remember Mark saying, you know, when we first come up with this idea and when I approached you guys, when I approached you, Ryan and Mark about coming on and doing this, I think we all had this idea that, yeah, it, it sounds like it'll be fun. Yeah. We don't know how long it's going to go for. Um, I, and I think we were all a little bit surprised that we hit 50 episodes. And now here we are at 74. You talk, I'll be right back. Yeah, I, unplug your microphone so you can hear me ever. Um, but yeah, like when Damien approached me, oh Christ, it was 18 months ago about doing this. Like I thought this was an amazing idea. Like just us five clowns getting together. And like, obviously like we were in the midst of COVID, you know, like guys going out for beer and wings, like that didn't exist and whatnot. But being able to sit down with, with these yahoos, even though we can't understand Damien half the time because he doesn't speak English. <laughs> um, but to see what we've grown to now at this point, and then being super, super fortunate with the sponsorships with Real Geese and Vortex, like we can't thank you people enough for what you've done for us. Um, and then obviously all the guests that we've had on the show, um, and then obviously some repeat guests like Jeff and, and whatnot. Um, and the content, at least like, I, I'm going to speak for myself, but I, I pretty much damn well know the four, the other four of them will echo this. The content that we've come up with on most episodes, um, on like the educational basis, has been mm -hmm. amazing. Um, like having Matt Pomeroy talking about gun fit, you know, and other guys talking about, you know, what goes into building a duck call. And what goes into designing decoys and laying out spreads and all and all this other stuff and again you know what it takes to be a photographer like having Wade Shoemaker on you know like the episodes like that and like that useful content that we hopefully would get out there to the masses and newer like even newer hunters or even seasoned hunters if they can take something away from those episodes where you know when we do something more educational based. The end of the day that's a huge win for me and i know the guys will agree. yeah like, big time knowing that we've had a positive impact as much as we clown around and can be absolute asshats on this show <laughs> knowing that someone has taken something from our show from one of our guests from something that we've said and have utilized it in their you know waterfowl hunting whatever the case may be that means the world to us because then we've had yeah. a positive impact on someone and yeah. hopefully that will have a ripple effect because like that yeah. guy's going to be out hunting with someone else and he's going to do that thing that he got from us and then other guys be like hey like where'd you learn that oh yeah like you know the punisher podcast like you know we, this guy was on the show and was talking about this stuff and like you know they've taken that and they've used it and they're like it's blown their minds and like i've learned a ton from being on this show and having you know some of these guest speakers on here oh big and time knowing that we've you know given a positive impact to the waterfowl community whether it be just in ontario or whether it's spread north american wide knowing that we've had an impact in a positive fashion means the world to us and that was big that's time. definitely one of the the big aspects that we have for this show and Hopefully we can yeah. continue to do this. Oh, we will, buddy. Um, we will because we've got the uh, great people that listen to us. And and listen, we are still very young. We're only 74 episodes in. Um, we are very young. We're still learning. We're still still trying to, to, to carve our way into this waterfowling world that, you know, um, the pie just... There's a ton of people that think the waterfowling industry community is massive, but it really isn't. And we're just trying to get a little slice, little slice of that pie 
just so that we can we can put out what we want to put out. And we've been really, really lucky that it's been um, um, it's been popular with a bunch of people. But listen, we're not naive enough to think that there's some people out there that don't like what we're doing. And that's fine if you don't like us. And if you don't like us, and if you've got, and if you've got some real criticisms, other than the fact that you don't like my face or you don't like my voice, but if you've got some, (laughs) yeah. um, But if you've got some real criticisms, listen, fire me a message. I've got big shoulders. I can take it. Trust me. Um, That's another thing too. Like for our millions and millions and millions of listeners, like if there's things you want to see on the show, yeah, one hundred percent. Either yep. message Damien, message yep. the Punner, Punisher account, message me, like any of the guys personally. Yeah. For the love of God, reach out to us and let us yeah. know, like, hey, you know what? I, I really don't like this. And you know, yeah. we'll look at reevaluating things. Or if you want to see more of something else, or you have an idea for a topic that you want to see, fucking get on the horn. Like, like a really important thing is, in. should I regrow the beard? Or should I keep it? it look like you're 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, it hey. Like you're fucking 12. Yeah, well, I'm not feeling like I'm 12 because um, Brave today it, before shave. <laughs> uh, it yeah. actually hit me today. I had to call Trish and I was like, I'm, uh, I'm not really doing much today. My hips hurt. I worked out and then my hips, my hips, Hips. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. H I P S. My hips hurt. You, you need to clearly do some more hip thrusting. Yeah, yeah I need more hip thrusts. I, I've got to talk to Trish about that. Some more deep, deep hip, hip, hip thrust. Anyways, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we are signing up because we are going to go down a rabbit hole that we really don't need to go down. Listen, thank you so much. And you guys that know me from our our friends, you do know that I'm being 100% sincere when I say thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for continuing to listen to us bunch of knuckleheads talk about what we love and you come back every week and we love it. And if there's a way that I could thank each and every one of you, I will just give me some time to figure out a way to do it. Big love everybody. Fish cakes. Yeah. Fish cakes. That's Phil Christian. I'm Damian Pittman. This is the Punisher Waterfowl. The one, the union 0430 podcast. We are the only one that, is 100% honest to God, blue collar. We just love hunting birds and hanging out with our buddies. Ask us anything, we'll tell you. Thank you. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ring that bell. Let us know anything that you need, just like Phil said. If there's something that you want to see or something that you don't like, listen, message us and we'll do our best to fix it. Phil, last words to you, buddy. Yeah, we can't really do a round the table. It's just from point A to point B because there's just mm-hmm. a few of us. Just us but right. again, like we, we, we appreciate all, all the followers. Like, and like I talked to you know some of my US buddies, like fellow staffer buddies and stuff, and they're like, dude, like I'm trying to get caught up on shows. I just saw this one, it was amazing. Like, you guys are doing a great job. We appreciate the comments, you know, all the love. Keep it coming, keep sharing the channel, like you know. For those that are watching, do us a huge favor and, and push it for what you can. You know, we appreciate the feedback and for those that are following. And again, like I just said, you know, if there's stuff that you want to see, please, please, please reach out to either Damien, any of us, the actual mm-hmm. Punisher account, like on Instagram, Facebook, whatever, yeah. reach out to us. And like, you know, if there's something that you, you know, you haven't seen on the show and you want to, let us know and we will get it out there. We are beyond respective for feedback and criticism and comments. Yep. We do this for you. Yeah. Partially yep. for us, because yep. we have a lot of fun with us knuckleheads. But yeah. we do this for the masses. We do this for you. So if there's things you want to see, content you want to see, topics, reach out, let us know, and we will factor it in and we'll give you a shout out.
with that everybody big love big thank you thank you once again for listening this was episode 74 many more to come big love until next week to take a quote from jeff coates bam <laughs> <laughs>